Let us give our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let us greet each other at this time. Let us nurture our kids with the word and prayer. Today's message is entitled, A Remnant to a Summit. Today I am greeting our church members via video, and the reason for that is because following the Asia Evangelism Conference in Hong Kong and the Saturday Core Service that was also held in Hong Kong, and now on the Lord's Day, there is a World United Lord's Day held at the Hong Kong New Life Mission Church. And because of that, I had to pre-record this message. Hong Kong, where the Asia Event Conference was held, was originally part of China's territory. Long before, before it became China, when China was once the Qing Dynasty, they w lost the Opium War against Britain and temporarily Hong Kong became a British colony. And British rule lasted for 156 years. And in 1997, July 1st, that uh, the territory was returned back to China. But from since then, for 50 years, Hong Kong has been under autonomous rule as a special administrative region without direct rule by the Chinese Communist Party. And so because there are two governing systems within one country, it is often called one country with two systems. However, Hong Kong the the highest position in Hong Kong is the chief executive and the chief executive started to become appointed by China based on their own preferences and because of that a lot of problems occurred and what happened then was the pro-democracy pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong and at that time Hong Kong the government tried to disperse the protesters with tear gas, but protesters used umbrellas to block it. And therefore, that uh, movement was called the Umbrella Revolution. Although there were two pro-democracy movements that took place, they did not succeed. And although it may seem like Hong Kong guarantees freedom from an external viewpoint, and its status as a global financial hub is significantly wavering. In 2020, a strong national law was passed showing a tendency to govern almost entirely according to China's government's preferences. And although their, the, their, their freedom is guaranteed until 2047, there are concerns that that very freedom may end even sooner. And what is even more serious is that the national security law allows the oppression of Christianity. And so from externally, it may seem like they guarantee religious freedom, but with the security law, they can, everything could be restricted. And it could even call for a life sentence in prison. And that is the security law that is prevalent in Hong Kong currently. And Hong Kong has been an important gateway for mainland, mainland China missions. So Christians residing in China would go back and forth and would hear the gospel from Hong, in Hong Kong. And whenever our headquarters and Reverend Yu couldn't, because they are unable to hold conferences in China, disciples in China would come to Hong Kong and receive the training in Hong Kong. But now they can't come anymore. It's become much more difficult for them. And that is why we ask that you may continuously pray for the field of Hong Kong. The end of the world, the end of the earth is the communist nations and the Islamic nations. 
And even within that, China is a very, very extensive continent, and therefore all missionaries are being casted out from these communist nations like China and Russia and, of course, North Korea. They are completely communist countries, and it has become they have become fields where it has become impossible to share the gospel. And so as we look at the biblical events movement recorded in the book of Acts, we must realistically pray for disciples who raise partisans of China evangelization to arise. Today, our church holds it as the remnants Lord's Day because the month of May is referred to Family Month, and there are various activities that relate to that. And this particular Sunday is Children's Day in Korean churches, and our church uses the term Remnant Sunday or Remnant Lord's Day, and it emphasizes the significance of relaying the clear covenant to the next generation. And so not just any Sunday, but it is a Remnant Lord's Day that's based on the Bible and Scripture. If you look at Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13, it says, And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burnt again like a turban or an oak, whose stump remains when it is felt. The holy seed is its stump. That stump in English is also referred to it as a remnant. The stump is what remains in the end. And that stump that is that remains to the end is the remnant. And therefore, we call it remnant Lord's Day. What does this mean? It means that... Our posterity who received the seed of the covenant. They're not just average children, but these children are those who possess the word of God. Our children, it's not just uh, and merely our children. They're not just children because they are young, but these children, they are those who have the covenant from a young age. And that is why they're called a remnant. And that is why to say I am a remnant means that I am one who has the covenants. I am a promise, a child of promise. It claims a significant spiritual identity. It's not an exaggeration to say that the evangelization of two through seven nations and 5,000 tribes depends on how remnants are raised. It implies that we have a historical mission to raise remnants correctly. That mission is given to our parents and our teachers. And therefore, the overarching directing message emphasizes the importance of the age of the three-day weekend alongside the ministry of the three courtyards. And therefore, I bless all members of Yewon Church in the name of the Lord to raise the firm parts of Christ and to have that covenantal challenge. And like today's message, may you have the evidence to raise these remnants as summits who save the age and future. Then point number one, creating the spiritual environment. If you look at verses 13 and 14, and they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Amen. If you look at the passage, it shows people bringing little children to Jesus, hoping Jesus would touch their children. At that time, Jews had a practice where they would bring their children to respected rabbis to receive blessings. The term touching here, in its original term, refers to laying hands on the heads of children to bless them. And so the term touch does not mean to just touch them, but it means to lay hands on their heads to bless them. It means it consists of the parents' earnest desire that desire their children to be children who have a deep relationship with God, to raise them as ones who resemble God's character and as ones who receive God's blessings. However, the disciples rebuked these parents. They rebuked them. They, because from the disciples' point of view, Jesus was already so busy with various ministries and they were chastising them, asking them why they're bringing children to him, causing unnecessary trouble when Jesus is already so busy. At that time, the cultural context, women and children were disregarded. Yet Jesus was 
greatly angered by the disciples' behavior. And, you know, nowadays people use it in media, but they were enraged. And why was he so angry? The reason, if you look at Mark 9, 36 to 37, Jesus had already used a child for his parable. He said, and he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The reason he, there is a reason he used this parable, and that was because the disciples had been arguing about who was the greatest, who was highest, who was being acknowledged by Jesus. If Jesus becomes king, then who will become the greatest here? That's what they were arguing about. And at that time, Jesus emphasizes how precious one soul is. In other words, Jesus was telling them not to be so seized by the introductory things, arguing who the greatest is, but hold on to the preciousness of one's soul. And it emphasizes that that was the very reason for Jesus' coming to earth. But not too long after that, the disciples had no thought. If you look at today's passage, they still didn't understand and had no interest in souls. That was the spiritual state of the disciples at that time. And that is why Jesus was enraged. And then it talks about the essence. Jesus says, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Jesus gave a message concerning the need to value souls more than all world treasures and also how to nurture remnants biblically. And what is the core of that? It is to help the remnants come before Jesus. It is to bring the remnants to the field of worship. It is to plant the absolute part of Christ inside the hearts and souls of the remnants. That is the mission of, ch of the parents. It is leading and nurturing and guiding the remnants to taste the blessing of becoming 24 hours with Jesus. Creating such a spiritual environment is the historical mission given to our church, our parents, and our teachers. That is why as we usher in the age of the three-day weekend, It is so that we may elevate our remnant spiritual state to the level of a summit. And that's the reason for why we have opened up the third day weekend. What do we do on Fridays? Friday is the time for our to help our remnants to have the power of prayer, to experience the power of prayer. And that is why even you must pray in your families, but there is also our Friday prayer meeting. And so during our Friday prayer, Friday night prayer service, it is we through that we must help them taste healing and the power of the covenant prayer. And so that they may experience the presence of the triune God, the prayer that enjoys the power of the throne, the prayer that experiences the five powers, the power that defeats the one who holds dominion over the air. Remnants must realistically experience these prayers to become the main figures who save the world. In short, the Friday night prayer service is the time to establish the absolute partisan of prayer within the remnants firmly. And that is why since remnants do not go to school on Saturday, I, I feel like it would be good for all of our families to come and have worship together on a Friday night so that from since when they're young they may have that practice and they can sleep all all day on Saturday and so when, starting from when I was at middle school I used to go to early morning prayer because of my mom and because I was afraid of my mom or because I was afraid to go to church because to go to church we had to go through a graveyard and it was kind of scary for my mom to go alone and that is why she would bring me along because I was a guy and my dad wouldn't go at that time so and I used to have to go with my mom all the time to this early morning prayer but that has become our nature of course at first I started going 
because I was forced to. But when it comes to the spiritual things, you have to force your children sometimes because later on when they grow up, they'll be thankful for that. Because children who have a flesh, how would they know to follow the spiritual things? And that is why sometimes you have to, you have to strongly urge them to follow such things and plant these things in their hearts. And that's why a very important time is Friday to come out on Friday and pray together. Why was it that the Israelites were always bewildered and why did they suffer in the face of all problems and in incidents, even though they were people of God? It is because their nature had not changed. The mentality of Egypt, the mentality of slavery, and the mentality of, of slavery that in which they worshipped idols, and the mentality of the wilderness, all of that still remained the same. These three did not change because they continuously held on to their incorrect imprints whenever problems came they suffered and so you know whether you really have established an absolute bison or whether your imprints have changed when there are problems and how can you break free from that it is to you can come out from that when you establish a bison of prayer if people, even though they go to church, they don't pray. Even if you're a pastor, you must have a means to testify lifelong when it comes to prayer. And so you must have that content to be able to testify before the, the congregation and before people when it comes to prayer. Even if you're an elder, And so those who truly pray, they, they are even far better than pastors because they receive great answers. And last time, I heard that Elder, Elder Chung, Elder Chung, Elder Chung, Myung Joo Chung had given a testimony and he, 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 and they had to ask him about five times to give a testimony in another church. And they said that they received so much grace from his testimony. And you know why his, his, his testimony has so much power? It's because of prayer. He prays five times a day. He sets a time to pray. And of course, God is bound to work. And so our elders and all our church members, you have to be able to go around the world twice with prayer. Do not seek for things of, of the world and introductory things because when you pray God gives those things accordingly but like unbelievers and as like religious people you're so seized by the introductory things and that's why it's so difficult and then on Saturdays we must help our remnants find their talent what is most important about remnants is finding their talent we must help them find their talent when it comes to our parents they don't have objectivity so it might be difficult and I said, what is, the, what is it that God has given to me? Those who have specialties must rise. There are many people in our church who have various specialties. And they need to meet the remnants. And so that our remnants may want to be, want to, want to be like these specialized individuals so that they may open their eyes. That's what we should do on Saturdays. And that's when it comes to our Saturdays, our church members, our elders, and our deaconesses and encouragers who may have specialties should come and have forum and have conversations with our remnants. And that is why on Saturdays we have the core service, so we should all attend the core. And also the ministry to the ministry where we partner with other churches would also be good. And that's why on Saturday, Saturday should be focused on discovering talents and specialties. Because discovering specialties is very important, but many people don't do that. And that's why there is a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of difficulties that follow from that. And then what, are, what is Sunday? Sunday should be entirely focused and centered on worship. 
And so, it is about the word of God becoming established as their imprint, root, and nature. That needs to be edited in them. It has to be planned in them and designed in them. And so the church and parents must create such a spiritual environment, a spiritual atmosphere like this. And this is the historical mission that God has given to us. It is our absolute mission given to us. By the grace of God, we have many remnants coming to our church from, from the infant ministry to the children's ministry to youth to college and young adults. But as time goes on, children are disappearing. The, the number, the population of children are decreasing because many young people are refuse to get married. And so, you know, they, they're more over 40s and 50s and they still don't get married. I don't know what they're doing. What are they calculating so much? And so, you know, our young people need to get married, but they don't. Why? Because they think that marriage is this grand thing. And so, what is your background? What is your, what, what do you bring to the table? That's all they care. It's all about money and materialistic things. And so nowadays, young people, there's no such thing as love at first sight. Now they, they just have to calculate so many things. They speak of the gospel with their mouth, but when it comes to their reality, it's all about the money. And that, how can they receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit that way? And so our young adults, may you listen and heed. You need to get married before you're 40 so you can raise children and raise remnants. How will you live by yourself? With what power will you live by yourself? And that's according to the Christian principle. It tells you to multiply. God created man and wife and told them to fill the earth to multiply. But now people are going against the Christian principle, aren't they? What is it that the parents and the church must create? It is the spiritual environment, especially when it comes to our church. It's quite spiritual, but there are many times where the family does not create that environment. The spiritual environment to pray before they go to bed, to stand before God and pray, and to plant the covenants through family worship, that kind of spiritual atmosphere. What is this? It's not something that you can or cannot do, but this is something that is a historical mission. And what is ingrained in the child does not disappear throughout one's life forever. Do you know why Daniel and his three friends, when they were only a teenager, were able to keep their faith that served the one and only Jehovah God despite being taken as captives to Babylon in their youth? It is because from a young age, they had received this word training. It was the power of the word training. It was imprinted in them, then led them to make an unwavering challenge of faith even in the face of a crisis of death. And to this day, Daniel and his three friends are continuously mentioned. What did Daniel do? He resolved. Even if he does not, they confessed. And even after knowing that the document, the decree had been signed, this type of confident and bold faith they all stood as spiritual summits. And naturally, they become cultural and skill summits. And so I pray every day for our remnants to become cultural, spiritual, and skill summits so that they may be, be, there may be figures who may be able to overcome the three organizations so that they may boldly testify of God's living works. I bless you in the name of the Lord that the church and each family may create this spiritual environment and have the evidence for all remnants to stand as the three summits. 
Point number two, using the spiritual blessing authority. Verse 15 reads, Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. After rebuking the disciples, Jesus speaks of the need to break free from all prejudice, stereotypes, and fixed ideas they held previously. He especially emphasizes that those who do not receive the kingdom of God like little children will never enter the kingdom. What this means, it doesn't mean that all children will go to heaven, but here, receive is a word translated from Greek as dexetai, what meaning to welcome, accept, and embrace. In other words, what are the characteristics of children? They accept everything just as it is given to them. And so they, they innocently and purely receive what their pastors or their teachers or their parents say to them. When I was doing a children's ministry, I remember if I, whenever I gave a message, the children would open their eyes wide. And of course, not all of them are like that. There are people, there are some kids who don't listen and do something else. But there are some children who open their eyes wide and listen carefully. And it kind of gives me chills. And you know why it gives me chills and why I'm a little bit scared of that? It's because I'm afraid that if I, I, sh I I'm afraid that I might say something incorrectly. Because whatever I'm saying is just being absorbed by them. So if I say and speak incorrectly, things might be might be a problem. And that is why it's important to speak correctly when it comes to children. Because they absorb and accept everything as is. When it comes to children, their accepting, their absorbing and understanding capacity is significant. to children who simply accept and embrace Jesus Christ, to people who accept and embrace Jesus Christ like children, they're given the kingdom of God. If you look at verse 16, it says, And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Jesus took all the little children who came to him, embraced them, and blessed them. The term blessed here, in its original meaning, means warmly blessed. Warmly blessed. It means that the overflowing love of Jesus was relayed. May our parents remember that you also have this spiritual authority to bless your children, just like Jesus. You have that spiritual blessing authority. And the opposite of spiritual blessing authority is curse. And that is why what you must be careful of what you say. The Old Testament, in the Old Testament, only priests and prophets were able to bless they were the ones who had the authority to bless. But now, now that it's an age of the Holy Spirit, even parents can bless their children. And that is why before your children go to school, lay your hands on them and bless them. And after they come back from school, bless them as well. And so give, pray for them before they go and after they come back. Then imagine what kind of relationship that parent and child will have. And especially in English, it's called blessing. And if you look in the dictionary, the word blessing is unique to Christianity. Other religions don't have a word called blessing. There is no such vocabulary. It's unique to Christianity. And why is that? Because when you look at the word blessing, the, it, it originates from the word blood signifying the blood sacrifice. In other words, true blessing comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of the cross, that is what the blessing is. All curses are casted out. And this doesn't exist in any other religion. It's unique to Christianity. When parents bless in the name of Jesus Christ, that blessing becomes theirs and that is why may you starting from today bless your children in the name of jesus christ bless them
even if they don't listen every day and they always play games on their computers. But even more so, all the more reason for you to bless them in the name of Jesus. And our children, when they receive these blessings, these prayers, they start to recognize that they are worthy of blessings. Oh, I have my my parents prayed f for me in the name of Jesus, and with that, they start to realize their value, how precious they are. And as they see their parents pray for them, they look upon God. This is what's important. And so the covenantal prayer that parents pray for their children does not fall to the ground at all. I always confess this, don't I? And so my, my dad and my mom, some, my, my dad would always, whenever he'd pray it during family worship, he would cry. And then when my mom would pray, we would, everyone would pray, I, everyone would sleep because whenever she'd pray, she'd start from Genesis to, to Revelations. And it would just be so long. And so, and uh, my mom's favorite hymn was would talk about how the grass withers and how everything withers, but only the word of God lasts forever. But then it talks about the sweet reign of the Holy Spirit. And my, that was one of my mom's favorite hymns. But when, and whenever I think about my parents' prayer, how can you, I can't, I can't, I can never forget it, even though I had to sit there and I was forced to sit there. But like I said, when it comes to the spiritual things, sometimes you have to force it because it's a fight. Because we are human beings who have a flesh. Children don't want to do that. And that's why you shouldn't drag it out and it shouldn't be long. All you need to do is confess the Apostles' Creed, sing one hymn. Don't sing two hymns. There's, it's too long. Just one hymn. And then hold on to the pulpit and have a simple forum. And one person should pray. And then you should end with the Lord's Prayer. And it should only last for 10 minutes. Because if, if it becomes longer than 10 minutes, children can't won't be able to stand that. So that next time when you have worship, they'll come again. But if you were to have worship 30 minutes or an hour long, people the children won't come the next time. And so that prayer, that covenant of prayer of parents make for their children, not a single word falls to the ground, especially when it comes to the prayer of a mother. Even when I talk, think about my mom, all her prayers were answered, even to this day. And I still recognize how my mother's prayers are still being answered to this day, even after decades have passed. And when you look at Joseph, who received Jacob's blessing, his life was answered according to his father's prayers. He lived a worthy life that exerted realistic spiritual influence. And so your nagging will never be able to change your children. But your prayer, your covenantal blessing, that prayer that consists of that covenantal blessing can change your children. So may you realize that fact and realistically use the spiritual blessing authority. Don't crudely say everything. Don't follow your emotions. And so may all our families of Yewon Church become gospel noble families and stand boldly in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a conclusion. And so when we ask who the most famous golfer is, we, we all know it. He's ti Tiger Woods. But nowadays, there were, he's, he has aged and there's been various accidents. So he, he isn't as he hasn't fully regained his former prowess. But if asked to name a player following in Tiger Woods footsteps, there's a, a golfer named Scotty Scheffler, and he is the world's number one ranked player from the United States. And so the past week, he won the greatest golfing tournament, the Masters, and he, that the 
reward for it is tremendous. And so he won last year as well as this year. But after winning, he said this. And so he confessed this as at the award ceremony. He said, I have received the talent of golf as a gift from God, and I want to use this talent solely to glorify God. That's all. And so as a, the joy and the confession of faith that he gave as a Christian, it exerted great and tremendous spiritual influence to many people. So many people can see that, oh, God helps him to be able to win that way. And that's how he has the specialty. And that's why it's important for our remnants to stand at summits in various fields and aspects. And it is important to have the mindset of a calling that, that you have been called to glorify God. And if especially our, the son of our missions department director, Elder Kim's son, we all know he's, he, all got, he received the Golden Glove Award in the MOB. And so whenever you think about these remnants, you have to pray for them. That's athlete Ha Sung Kim is as a remnant summit may be able to glorify and reveal God's name and speak that of the fact that Jesus is the Christ. So, so that many historical and renowned figures may come out from her remnants. For the glory of God, God has called me. You must have that m calling mindset. And remnants who live according to that and make that covenantal challenge. Like the seven remnants that they may be able to proclaim of the living works of God. May you become a Yewon unity and Yewon remnants and Yewon families such as that. In the name of the Lord, let us pray. Father God, may all the remnants of Yewon Church become spiritual summits, cultural summits, and skill summits as figures who will be able to overcome the three organizations, may be able to nurture our remnants that way, and may we be able to realize correctly the mission that the church and parents must carry out, and may we not nurture our children but with the ways of the world, but may we be able to nurture them with prayer, word, and worship. And may be able to create the spiritual environment and may all families become family churches and have family services. And as they are raised in their family, may they be able, as they see their parents' spiritual state, may that become a model for them. And may they become the eighth remnant of this age. Whatever problems and incidents may occur, like the seven remnants, May they, like the seven remnants, become the historical figures that are used in this age. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.